we have an objection to government telling people that they must wear a mask or telling businesses that they must force people to wear a mask to come in. That business does not belong to the government and I do not belong to the government. Masking also certainly a hot topic at tonight's Springfield City Council meeting, which is still going on, even though masking wasn't on the agenda. Color 10's Francis Lynn up next tonight. She's here to show us what some had to say against the city's face covering ordinance and also to break down some other issues the council members talked about tonight. Francis. Good evening, David. So the rezoning of four acres at the Galloway neighborhood was brought up once again. As you may remember, this has been on the agenda since two years ago, but the city did not vote on it tonight. However, a new part of the ordinance, an amendment that would reduce building height for new development, was passed. Council also heard the first reading of an effort by the Public Works Department to make the Republic Road intersection with Campbell Avenue safer and less congested. Council approved this project. But first, let's start with an anti-masking mandate protest outside City Hall tonight. It is basically a human right for people to make decisions for themselves. People gathered outside the chambers tonight demanding to get rid of the mask mandate. The argument you can never make is he'd have been dead except he had his seat belt on. You know, you can never make that argument. You don't know. Some protesters say they don't believe masks work. I could go, I could get it tomorrow. I don't know. Any, any of us could get it. But uh, I don't think the masks are doing a thing. However, inside the council chambers, health director Clay Goddard addressed some past comments from those against masking. A white paper that we transmitted to you in July cited 19 studies that suggest that uh, statewide uh, face covering ordinances do decrease disease transmission. And reminding people that masks are to protect others. My wife uh, uh, was diagnosed with the flu back in uh, February in Florida. When she came in with flu-like symptoms, the first thing they did was put a face mask on her. That is really the purpose of, of uh, face masking, uh, face covers, is to reduce that respiratory plume, therefore protecting people around you. And, uh, you know, we would hope that people would make that sacrifice to protect others by wearing one themselves. And the first agenda item, rezoning over four acres of property on South Lone Pine Avenue to commercial and multifamily buildings. We're tired. Marcy Kirkup is with the Galloway Village Neighborhood Association. This has pretty much become a second full-time job for many of us. All of our families are tiring of us being gone. We're ready for it to be over. If approved, developers could build apartment complexes and new businesses could also open up. This makes Galloway residents worried about increased traffic. The 12 foot pinch point um, behind me and it, I don't understand how 1,200 cars potentially could use that. That's an average, I think they said, of three cars per minute. And it's just a shame that someone could come in and destroy the essence of Galloway Village neighborhood. Charles Ewing, also a resident at Galloway neighborhood, wants nearby trees to be preserved. The trees you see here, none of this will be preserved. So they're going to be destroying three acres of here of all of these trees and the topography and the animals that live there. Also at City Council tonight, changes to Republic Road. The Public Works Department is trying to make the intersection with Campbell safer and less congested. So we're widening Republic Road to five lanes. Uh, we're adding dual turn lanes on every side of the intersection except for one. Um, there will be some widening on Campbell also. Campbell and Republic Road has historically been a very busy intersection because you know, we've got James River Freeway on the interchange there. Uh, it's just a busy area, a lot of commercial properties and retail. The city will also add bike lanes and construction may begin as early as next year. Now, I did reach out to the developer planning on building on Lone Pine Avenue. He has not responded to me yet. Plus, City Council also listened to the first reading of adding a diversity officer in Springfield. I'll have more on this story later this week on Color 10 News. Francis Lynn tonight here at 10. Thank you.